Welcome to this tutorial request in which we will be creating floating damage numbers. Um, let's jump into it and look at what we will be creating. Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So this is what we will be creating today. We have a character over here and uh, when I press a key it will hurt that character over there which will then send floating numbers. However I decided to do something a little bit, bit more fun with it. I wanted to have a damage number that was not just floating but actually interacting with the world flying around bouncing and stuff like that. So when we press our key you can see that it's actually bouncing and it's uh, interacting with whatever objects in the world that it has been designed to interact with. So it's ignoring for example the pawns, it doesn't get obstructed by it, but it will interact with things like the world. And so yeah, it's just using some random numbers here, but this is an easy event to hook up to. Uh, it will work with any kind of damage and it's uh, a blueprint component so it's very easy to add to. Uh, any actor in the world essentially. Here we are inside the Unreal Engine 4.26. Now this is a project I've been playing around with for a little bit but what we will be doing today will work uh, fine in any project. We will be doing all the parts that you need from scratch. Uh, essentially what I have here is just one character which I will be that is taken control of by the player when we start and click play and then over here i have a copy of that character which is just not being possessed so he will be our enemy in this case and he will be the one who we will be getting the, the damage numbers from so let's uh, set up what we will be needing so first off we need a way to actually damage this character so we can go into our project settings and we can go to inputs and we can go and create a new action mapping and we can call this one hurt all evil npc and we can have a key one for that to just have something so we can execute it easily uh, with that done we can go into our third person character and we can create some logic for this. So we'll type in hurt all evil npc. We'll get the event for that. Now what we want to do is we want to find all the npcs that we're gonna be hurting, right? So we know that he's a third person character so we can do a get all actors but we can choose the one with uh, of class with tag and then we can say we want it to be of the actor class third person character and we can say that the tag should be npc in all caps. Now the character doesn't have this tag currently so what we'll do is we'll go and mark the character and then we'll go here to details and type in tags. Down here on tags we can now add a tag that says npc. This means that this specific character now will be affected by uh, this search here so we will get him as a result. So that's good. Now what we want to do is we want to loop through all the different characters that this match or actors really that this match and we just want to apply damage to them so that's what we'll do we'll apply damage like so and the damage that we will applying we can have a random range so we can say we want to do somewhere between 1 and uh, 200 or something like that right and that's the, the damage part done. So now we need to actually have uh, the floating damage numbers. So let's create a widget to begin with that will be representing our numbers. We we'll call it w underscore damage floating damage. Like so. Opening that up, we will change from fill screen to desired on screen. We'll remove the canvas and we'll drag in a text. The text we can set some kind of uh, example text here like 42 and we can change the outline to be one so we get a little bit of a black border around it. That should be fine. Uh, compile and save. We know at some point we will be needing to tell this widget what kind of a number it should be displaying. So what we can do is we can create a blueprint interface. So we go to blueprints, blueprint interfaces, we'll call it ppi underscore, um, let's say set damage 
value. And we'll open that up. We'll create a function that says set damage value. Now let's display the values in integers. So that's what we will be doing. We'll put an input here and we'll set that it should be integer. You can have whatever type you want, of course, but integer will make it nice uh, numbers without decimals and such. Uh, we'll name it damage value as the input value. Then we can go back to our uh, widget. We'll go back to our graph. We click on class settings. We say we want to add an interface. So this is where we will be receiving this information. So we'll type in BPI set the damage value, compile and save. Then we'll go to the interface and say implement the interface. We can remove the tick and the pre-construct don't here because we won't be needing them. But here we want to say, uh, we want to set whatever value we get in here from the interface to the actual text here in the widget that we have. To do that, we need to make this widget, first of all, a variable. So we'll give it a name like damage value text. And we'll click in the is variable, compile and save. Going back to the graph now, we have it as a variable over here. We'll drag it in. We'll drag off from it and say set text. And then we just hook up whatever integer value we have, like so. And the text should now be set to whatever value we're sending in. So now that part is theoretically done. So let's go back to our content again now. So we have now a widget that we want to uh, display. But now we need to have it actually be in the world and interact with the world. So it can bounce around and not just be a floating number. So the way we will be doing this is we will be creating a blueprint. Go to blueprint class and make it of type actor. We'll call it bp underscore damage number actor. Okay. Now we 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 want to have this have the ability to bounce around in the world, and to do that, we need to have a mesh of some sort. So we will add a static mesh, and we will choose. We can keep the name, and we'll just pick a cube. This cube, however, is a little bit big since it's a meter uh, in uh, a cubic meter in size or volume. Uh, so we will go to the scale and set to 0 0.1 so it becomes much, much smaller. And this is uh, not going to matter all that much. This will be our physical representation in the world, but uh, we will be hiding it later on. Now we need to also add a widget. So we'll go in here, we'll type in a widget. So now we have a widget under the static mesh, which means that when the static mesh moves around, it will follow along. Uh, before we actually go further, let's go back to the static mesh and type in simulate physics. So it has simulate physics set, like so. Going back to our widget, we can now go down here and say we want to have a widget class of the floating damage that we created. We want it to be in the space of screen, so it's always shown, even if there are meshes in the way. And we want to make sure that it's drawn at the desired size. So uh, whatever we are uh, assigning as size over here in the widget is whatever it's going to be shown as. And that should more or less be all that we need over here. So now we can go into the actual blueprint for this cube or damage number actor. We can remove the begin overlap and the tick because we won't be needing those either. Now the behavior we're gonna have here is that we're gonna have our logic be mainly done on the begin play because whenever this character is spawned that's when it will be doing its different things. So first of all we want to get the widget reference that we have. From that we want to get our user widget <coughs> object, which means that we go from having a widget component object to having a widget object reference. With this, we can now try and cast this, and we want to cast it to our uh, floating damage widget type. And with this done, we can now uh, make use of this uh, specific type. We won't be using the specific type right away. We will, however, start by setting our damage 
value with a message to the interface that we created and say whatever damage value we should have is going to be sent in here. The damage value we're sending in here is going to be kept inside of this actor. So we'll create a variable for it, which we will call damage. We will make it of the type integer and compile and save, and then we'll drag it off over here. So now we're sending in that value, but we need this to be exposed. So when we create this actor, it can actually be assigned a value. So we'll go to damage the variable and click in instance editable and expose on spawn. Now, if we spawn this, this actor somewhere in the world, we will have a pin available to set the damage, which will allow it to send the damage to its belonging widget in it. After that, we want to play around with it and making it have like bounce around in the world. And to do that, we'll just take our static mesh and we'll type in add impulse. This will give it a force in the world and the force it gets is going to be in the direction that we type in here in the impulse and the numbers will designate how strong it will be. So if we are to split this, we'll get three different axes to play around with. And what we can do is we can go and type in, drag off one of them, type random range. That's not how you spell random. Like so. And let's copy paste that a few times. So we have a few of them. So now these will be our parameters for how this will be moving around in the world. So these you can either promote the variables or just change the values here later on when you want to, to get the feel that you want to. I'm just going to be putting in some values here. So minus 400 and 400 to allow it to go equally uh, much in uh, equal to, to allow it to go as much to the left as to the right when you take the x-axis into consideration the same for the y-axis because these are the two axes that are like uh, sideways and the third one being the z which will be the height and we'll make sure to have some height here at least so 400 to 800 might be good. Then we can click in velocity change as well to make it uh, get assigned at that velocity be to begin with. So now we are theoretically putting this into the world and making it have an impulse. So now we should be able to test it and see what it looks like. Putting it into the world like so, and then pressing play. You can see that we get a zero and it's jumping around and bouncing on the floor. So that's all good and fine. So now we want to make the, the widget fade out because we don't want it to lie around there forever. So we'll go down here to the animation part and we'll type uh, fade out as a name. And then we'll add a track of uh, named widgets and we can take the damage value text, which is the variable that we created. We'll add a track for this and we'll say that we want to change the render opacity. Now, the render opacity will determine how faded it is going to be. So to start off with, we want to have it starting off at 100% or the value of one. So we'll click here to get a, a key for that at time zero. Let's say we want it to last two seconds. Then we can type in zero over here and pressing enter will give us a key over here. This will allow us to see that it will fade out from beginning to end here. However, you might feel like, okay, maybe it shouldn't be fading in this particular way. Maybe we want it to fade, not linearly, like it's actually, it's not doing it completely linearly. It's doing a cubic one, which we can see if we mark it and right click, I believe. No, there, cubic. Um, but we might want to have it something like, okay, it should be fading slightly less in the beginning and then more later on. So we can make another keyframe in the middle, maybe saying uh, 0.7, let's say. And we'll, you know, you got the keyframes. So now we'll be blending from one to 0 0.7 at, at one second, and then it will take the last part uh, over the last second. So that's allowing it to, to fade out. Now that we have created our animation, let's make use of that animation. So on the construct, that's when the widget is being created, which happens when the blueprint actor for uh, damage number is created that's when we want to start playing the fade immediately. So we'll play animation uh, with finished event. The reason for this is we want to know when it has finished playing the animation so we can continue to work on functionality at that point. 
For widget, we will drag out and type self. So we have a reference to whoever this actor is, which is this widget. For animation, we want to drag in the fade reference that we just got from creating the animation. Compiling and saving, now this allows us to uh, play this animation. So if we were to test it now, we should see that the zero is going out and then it's fading and then apparently destroying my door over there. Uh, next up, we will look at uh, how we can spawn a bunch of these now in the world. To make this a little bit modular, we will create a blueprint uh, actor component to allow it so you can just drag and drop it on, on an actor and then it will uh, start displaying numbers like this. So we'll go to blueprint class, we will do an actor component, we'll call it bp underscore, actually bpc underscore uh, damage display is a good name I think. Going into it, we will remove the tick because we don't want it. Then we will say, okay, what we're gonna do is whoever this component belongs to, we want to check whenever it is taking damage. So we need to start off with getting its owner. Now that we have its owner, we can actually go and hook on to its event that happens whenever it takes damage. So uh, there's an event called any damage. So bind event on take any damage. This means that whenever any damage is taken, we will hook on to it and do something. So we'll drag off from the event and add event and add custom event and we'll call this uh, damage take. So whenever that, this happens, we then want to actually spawn this actor that has the widget inside of it, right? So we'll do that. We'll spawn actor from class and we'll make sure to have it of the type BP damage number actor. Now you can see that we get a damage here because we exposed that value variable earlier. So we can, first of all, we can split the transform struct and then we'll drag in the damage to the integer over here and you'll see we get a truncate because this is a float and this is an integer so it will drop the decimals here. Other than that we also want to get its actual location to spawn it where the actor that's getting damaged is so we'll drag off the owner again and get actor location. This will give us the location of the actor that's getting damaged and we can plug it into our spawn transform location. Compiling and saving now allows us to have this functionality available. And now if we go to the third person character, we can add this component. So BPC damage display, like so. And now we should be able to do a check for this. So whenever we press the one key, we will hurt all evil NPCs. We should hit that NPC if it has the tag. We should apply damage to it. We should get caught by the blueprint component that we have added to it and then it should spawn an actor of this class. The actor of that class should then be getting the widget that it has. It should be sending damage in the form of the damage variable that has been set and then it should be adding the impulse and sending it away somewhere in the world. So let's see how that works out. So that was the first damage number. Uh, pressing the key now you can see that we're getting uh, some numbers flying, flying around, but we also see that we have the character moving around. That has to do with the box that we have over here. This one actually has collision on it, and we don't want to have collision when it comes to interacting with the player and such. So we will be changing the, the functionality for its collision. So we'll go to here, collision presets. We can go to custom. And we can say we want to not uh, block any visibility and cameras we don't want to get in the way of. We don't want to get in the way of pawns. And here you can also change if you want to have other uh, choices, of course. But this should allow us to uh, have it flying around now without uh, getting interfering interference with the the character. However, now you might see that we're getting suddenly a lot of uh, cubes on the floor here. And that is because we're spawning these actors, but we're not actually, actually, actually cleaning them up. We're not destroying them at any point. And that is what we can take care of now. So when we go to our widget, we have a playing animation that will fade out. After it has faded out, there's really no point in having this actor anymore. So we'll create an event dispatcher, which we will call 
widget life time over or something like that. We'll drag it out and we'll say call that. So now anyone that's interested of this event dispatcher can figure out that we're done with our fading in this widget. The only one that's interested in that is going to be the actor that actually spawned it. So if we go into it here, you can see that we now have some space here. After we have cast it to the floating uh, damage widget, we can now say bind widget and you'll get the widget lifetime over. So hooking that up, we can now say what should we do when the lifetime is over for the widget? Well, let's drag off an event, add an event, add a custom event, and let's call it uh, widget dead or something like that. So this widget or this event will happen when the widget has faded out and then we know that this actor should no longer exist. So we'll just call a destroy message and destroy ourselves here. Going back to test, we can now see pressing our key, it's flying around and you can see that the boxes are eventually being removed. Now we don't actually have any use for the boxes anymore other than actually being our center of gravity for flying around with the numbers essentially and having it interact with the environment. So now would be a good time to go into the actor and find the static mesh and type in, actually we can probably find it visible. So we'll make it not visible. Now playing again, you can see can spam the key and we get these numbers flying around. So that is essentially how you can make this work. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.